Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Common Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. Hi, and welcome to Common Ground. I'm your host, Ashley Hall. On this week's episode of Common Ground, we continue our coverage of Charles Kapsner as he continues his Army mural project by utilizing his extensive research, talent, and respect for the United States military. Well, since our last visit, a lot has happened. The painting number one has been moved from the maintenance building at the cemetery now to my studio. So now we're back in my studio where the last time you'd have been here shooting, we were still at the stage where the models were coming in. What's happened since our last visit is you can see the center section has been blocked in. I've blocked in the background. There still are a couple small areas that have to be developed out, very, getting very minimal. But um, now we can get a sense of what this painting is really going to look like by the fact that the environment is beginning to be there. Now, some of you might look at it and say, well, the colors look a little weird in particular on the trees back there and then on the jungle scene. Well, what I'm doing here is I'm working with a different palette called the prismatic palette. And um, you work with cool shadows in this concept versus warm shadows. Where, when, I mean warm shadows, if you were to look at the shadow area on like the nurse over there or like on these portraits coming through you see that sort of warm orangey sort of sienna look and up there it's real cool blue gray and stuff like that so um, it's it's a palette that's different than what my regular palette would be it has only one earth pigment color on it versus the other palette of mine has about um, seven or eight it's just another way to experiment with the color theory and i thought because I've invented a landscape that isn't a real landscape, that it, this would be a prime opportunity to experiment with that kind of color theory to really move it forward, you know. And so, again, as a painter, I think it's important to continue to experiment with different things. And this is a huge opportunity to do something like that rather than just go sort of status quo. Let's see if, if we can, if, if there's a way to make the painting better than what I would know than I know before I start playing with this, well then let's go for it, you know. So it, it's trying to always excel with what you're doing. So that kind of explains what's going on back there as far as the oddity of it. The other comment I would make is, normally when I start a painting, I would start with the background, middle ground, foreground, but because of the nature of this project with the fact that we've had to incorporate, well, all fundraising efforts to, to have it done, I've had to really develop the foreground in a way that people could come in and see that yes, we are in fact doing a tribute to the men and women of the military and what this is all about. So um, I would not have, I would not allow my student or suggest that the way I was going about it is a proper way of painting as far as the process. But because of my experience, I knew that I could get the impact here and figure all that out later on. One, because of all of the tremendous work I've done in fresco painting, it's not until the very last day when you're working on a fresco and that very last piece of the puzzle is laid down on the wall, that piece of plaster, that you actually see the whole composition. So because of 30 some years of experience of working on projects like that, the fact that I didn't see everything from the very beginning was and would attack an area like this and go more for a finish. It's not something that bothers me to, th to, to think, oh, is this going to be out of sync with such, a, such an area, such and such an area, because I know to come back in and balance it all out. As you look across the different levels of the portraits, you can see that that has flesh colors already happening on it, as do the cannon team. Over the 4th of July weekend, I thought, well, I would kind of focus in on up in that area because of 4th of July, and that's really the beginning of uh, where the story is, it actually starts in um, April of 1775 with Lexington, so that's what that little sign is back there. And then of course we have the Valley Forge, um, Paul Revere, Washington Cross in Delaware, and then the typical Cannon team. And because these portraits here are gonna be much higher off the ground, probably 15 feet off the ground, it's not necessary to have the kind of detail 
that will be happening in these in the front because this is where the big impact is. And so I will be gauging uh, different types of sensitivity on the portraits as I, as I work through those, which will be the next step after I finish the landscape. So once I get this blocked in, we'll do a little work here today. Um, once that's all covered, then I will concentrate for the rest of the month on finishing off the top of the painting altogether. So in early August, I come through and just really start to move through these figures and then, you know, get down to the front and then kind of go in for the finish. So, uh, you know, a lot of different things to happen yet. What we'll do now is um, let me start working on the World War I nurse. We'll review this quick like again. When we went from the big drawing over there to this, we would uh, photograph that, pull the chip out of the camera, put it into our little artiograph projector, project it, uh, we'd match our grids, and then I would take a piece of charcoal and quickly line over the charcoal. So you see just a little bit of that, I have yet to fix it, clean up the hands. And the next step would be to clean it up and then refine it where I would take a brush um, like this, a little bit of turpentine and this raw sienna, and then very lightly draw it in over that, and then let that sit for a while and dry, and then I could dust it off and, I, and it would take off the excess charcoal then I'm left with just these lines like you see. Then the next step would be to work with just this raw sienna and the brown ochre deep to go into like a little sapia wash. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the next step where we're gonna actually start applying some of the color like what I did here yesterday. So we'll, we'll watch that step. When I did the research, one of the things that, I mean, I walked into this knowing, you know, a certain amount of American history and really nothing about military history. <laughs> so I had to jump in with both feet on research. Oddly enough, the Army, the sketch was the first sketch I did. It took the longest to do, and it's the simplest as far as how it's technically rendered. By the time I got to the Navy and it kind of come up with a pattern of research, I mean, I did that drawing for the Navy in eight days, and the Army one took me like five weeks to do. Well, the same thing is kind of going through with the painting because it's taken me a lot more time to get this first one um, done than what it would on the others because it's, it's all new. I mean, I, granted, I've painted oil for years and years and years, but nothing this large and nothing this complex. And so there's just a lot of things you've got to kind of work yourself through. But also, you need to keep your mind focused just strictly on the Army. So all kind of communications and contacts that I, I do right now with anything military has all been Army related because when you got done composing the first one and all of a sudden picked up the book on the Navy or whatever branch it was going to be, you had to pretty much forget everything except American history. And then you had to start afresh, you know, like what is this, the the culture of the Navy, the history of the Navy, and, and you had to get yourself into that whole mindset. So there'd be that sort of day of, you know, stumbling through, okay, now what am I doing, what am I doing? And then when that composition got done and you're moving into the next branch, it was again the same thing. I felt very good when I've chatted with, with some people from the different branches that I, in fact, have been going about it in a way that seems to be pleasing them. It's not upsetting anybody. And then, of course, by going at it in this sort of allegorical approach, the way I have been, it does sort of take away some of the potential for criticism by the fact that I'm not focusing on wars or battles. Because then it'd be like, well, how come this isn't there? How come that isn't there? So by focusing on the men and women and some of their duties and, and trying to uh, express some of the hardships, in particular like with the homeless guy over there, I want people to look at it from the human side, not from the battle side. When you have your notes in front of you like this, I did that for the study to make sure that everything I need to have up here is resolved over there before it gets over here. And then these other things, again, bring me to the, to the person, the feeling of, of that time frame. And then, of course, uh, some of the color and light just to remind me what was going on in the building at that time. And because all my light sources, everyone was in the same place in the studio when they were modeling, so I could, could keep a consistent light source within the whole composition which also is the same for how the landscape is being composed too. For some people, it's pretty hard to imagine a little thumbnail sketch turning into a painting like this. And that's why I'm very excited to get the first one in the building so people will really understand where the whole thing is going. So that's basically just the first quick block in a color. I'll build the density up a little bit on the next session because applying the paint the way I did, I've gone back to rough it up a little bit. So the next session, I'll apply a little bit of my medium on top, just a real thin 
uh, skin of that that'll um, help set up a little resistance with the paint. I am part of the tag team fundraising uh, group and so uh, with Mr. Zilka and several other folks we are uh, the ones going out and trying to explain what how important this project is to the veterans, not only to the large corporations, but to the individual families. Um, my father was, is a Korean War vet. And as I start to talk to folks like myself, whose parents, brothers, sisters, that have been in the military, they get it. They want to be part of the project, too. So first of all, they start to think about what is it that we're talking about. And you know, sometimes they get that 50,000 foot view of, oh, it's just some other memorial similar to anything you might see in Washington or any community around uh, the United States. But as you talk to them longer and they understand how unique this project is, how it's not just a war, a branch of the service, but it's 235 years of history where the military has made such an impact on the freedom and democracy of this nation. That's when you start to see them get excited. Now, how many times I've said it's going to be an eight foot by a 10 foot, you know, five, eight foot by 10 foot paintings? They all kind of go, okay. Then you say, now understand, look at the wall behind me, eight foot by 10 foots up from the floor to the ceiling and about this far, then their eyes just start to, to really light up. We've been getting a, a lot of support from veterans organizations, other service organizations, businesses, but the other real important comp component are the individuals. That this is not just about um, you know the, the big corporations or whatever coming in, it's also about the people who have folks like my mom and my dad who um, were so excited to be part of the, uh, the military. It's about them being able to honor their people too. Charles and I graduated together and uh, he had stopped in my office at Coburn's and uh, explained the project to me a little bit and um, asked if I'd be interested in participating and I've been involved in a few fundraisers in the community and told them that I would love to and that there's nothing uh, more important than honoring our veterans and that I'd be honored to take part in that. This is uh, not only honoring veterans but it's also educating children for generations to come uh, because I think at times uh, some of what's going on up here gets lost uh, in the teachings through school. Fundraising is going well but we've got a long ways to go. We had about a five-year timeline. We're about a year and a half into it and I can honestly say that I did not imagine it to be to this magnitude and what we can actually get out of this and and how the veterans have bought into it and how excited they are about it is just totally incredible and uh, really blows me away to be able to take part in this. But you can see at this point how vibrant the colors have become because of just, you know, you keep building up more and more on them. So the last time you saw, I think this guy was just scrubbed in, but if you look at like the detail right in here, and then when it gets to like his face, for instance, the next step is then applying a thin veil of red and then working with the flesh colors as we see them. So that in essence is really one of the few things that are left in addition to uh, the trees. You can see the landscape has changed considerably. Then of course you can see the different star patterns that are on the flags and things like that. So what I'm going to do now is scrub a little uh, medium over this area. When I use the term scrubbing in, you know, I mean, I, you can see that I'm really pushing it in. I'm not just like taking a really thick, big layer and having this big, you know, big glob looking like a pile of Vaseline or something laying on top of the painting. It's a matter of really pushing it in because you, um, you don't want a real heavy body of this medium on the, the paint itself. It needs to uh, act as a uh, catalyst for the, you know, it to grab the next layer. Now you wouldn't necessarily have to do this just because I work with different thicknesses of paint. I like to have this sort of fat over lean principle and I want this kind of bonding um, with these oils. And actually what happens as this starts to set up on the area I'm painting, it starts to make the paint more viscous, which means it drags more and allows me to control and work with softer edges and stuff like that. So we'll see what we get color-wise on top of this applique. A lot of people 
you know, just want to know, um, is there going to be some kind of explanation, you know, about everything that's, you know, on here and how you're going to go about writing it. You know, there's a small one that I've, I have already put together um, that's with the sketches, but there's nothing that really uh, talks about all of the additional things that have added, because one of, the, one of the, the elements about the project, I guess, has been really interesting is that even when you look at the initial design, you know, there's still things happening, being put in, being changed, you know, I mean, like for instance, the um, Eagle Staff and the um, tobacco pouch, I mean, I knew they were going to go in, but it wasn't until like uh, two weeks ago on Wednesday, I went up to the Mille Lacs Museum and actually talked to the uh, site manager up there and then, you know, got the information and that's just a couple weeks ago and everything else was on the canvas, you know, so still like, you know, adding things. Um, to the very last minute as you gather information. Once I'm finished with this, um, which will be very soon, we'll take the painting to Duluth on November 7th. It will go to CPL Imagery Jeff Fry Associates and at that time we'll be doing a uh, high-end, uh, will be like a laser scan for um, a high-end uh, reproduction of the painting called the Gicle, which is an eight color process. And then on the um, 10th, it will go to the Depot Museum it will be on display there for that Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, uh, 10th through the 13th. And on Friday morning, there'll be some kind of program that morning for the veterans uh, on site. So we'll have the proper audience right away um, that day. And then after that, the painting will be brought down here and it will be installed in the committal hall on the 15th or the 16th of November. And then on the 25th and 26th, the Friday and Saturday after Thanksgiving, there will be a um, open house from one until five with a program. And it'll be just kind of a, a family day. So for people that want to be doing something the day after Thanksgiving, they can come out and see the painting. Probably about five months after it's dry, I will uh, go out there and we'll, uh, we'll varnish it. And, and that's, that'll bring the all the tones up to a uniform sort of feel. I kind of had set a goal of where I felt I should be at, at the end of each month. And then if I knew I was within that realm and what was happening, July was running a little over, August was running a little over and I started thinking, oh boy. I was like kind of getting a little nervous because I started telling everyone, setting up all these dates, thinking, well, we, we, we got to start committing somewhere to say, when's it going to be done? When are there going to be some events? And then I just started looking. So once I finally made it sort of very real that this is where we're going to be, on these days and then once it started to move along it's, it's been perfect so I mean I'm feeling uh, real comfortable where it's at now versus the way I felt the, you know a couple months ago <laughs> which is good. Gordon Gerling approached me at the cemetery about doing some type of memorial. He apparently had run into Charles at an event here in town and, and they had a conversation uh, that evening and, and uh, things kind of fell into place rather rather quickly and uh, Charles came out to the cemetery and, and looked at our facility and they kind of talked about some different things and uh, came forward with a proposal to us of the five oil paintings and uh, it seemed like a natural fit for our facility. Uh, be able to spend all the time that I have uh, with Charles and in his initial work on, on this piece out at the cemetery and, and kind of relearn you know where where we've been where we've come from uh, how our military has uh, built the society that we have today the democracy and freedoms that we all enjoy and i think that's an exciting part of this project you know the space where these paintings will be placed is a is a pretty special place all of our committal services are required to be held in the building where these paintings will hang and so it's you know it's going to be a final tribute to virtually all individuals that end up being buried at the cemetery to have their families, uh, you know, in the final time that they're going to spend with their loved one before they're uh, interred at the cemetery, will be surrounded by by these pieces of artwork that are really a tribute to, to all of those people that not only will be buried at the cemetery, but all veterans who have served our country. There was a memorial group started. And I was part of that. And I, I've, I've had a hang up on monuments, not that they just like monuments to our wars, 
it, it, to me, it just didn't fit. And to me, what our, all our branches of service are there for is to protect and maintain our democracy. And that's what I wanted to see. Well, I had many thoughts about it. And first I uh, approached Charles Kapsner at an art show in Little Falls. And uh, oh, maybe a week or two later, we met at, at uh, Black and White. And, and it was really he that said that he'd like to do it in painting. Well, the light bulb went off in my head and said, yes. And that's where, where we really got started. Charles, not only is the painter here, and the artist, he's also the, the person that put the thoughts together. There's no way that I or any veteran could have thought of all the things that he come up with was necessary. And in the painting, Things are authentic. They're, they're not something that he dreamed up. The, the buttons are authentic to the people that wore them at that time. And there's so many things in it that you have to look for. Paul Revere, then Thomas Paine. Every time that I walk into his studio when he was painting this and looked at what he'd been doing, it just leaps out at you. It's someone that knew what he was doing and why he was doing it. He is an amazing artist, an amazing person. Yeah, the, the knowledge that he has to acquire to put an authentic painting like this together, he just has done such an exceptional job. Yeah, and, when I look at it, and each time I look at it, I catch something new. We call this our Veterans Educational Historic Project. And that's what it is. We want this for the children that come by and see this, to let this be an opening in their thinking of our democracy and what it takes to preserve and, and keep that democracy together. And it's well, well represented uh, in this painting and the other four that are going to be coming. It's almost five months ago now that we finished it, um, come the 30th, and it, it, uh, it some ways seems like a long time ago, and other ways it seems kind of like yesterday. And it, but like I was saying earlier, I feel like, well, the kid turned 18, I kicked him out, and now it's like <laughs> I came out here and like, oh my gosh, there it is. I missed working on it, and then I, I did need a break, uh, so I took a few months off to do some other things. But now for the last four weeks, I've been very busy drawing the first initial characters for the Navy, and it feels good to be you know, back into it because of the research I'll have to do and, and uh, you know, just the excitement of people coming up and asking how it's going and knowing that that the general public is really looking forward to seeing it. That's, that's uh, really, uh, that's what you want, you know. Timeline, I always knew the first one was going to take the longest because this is the largest oil painting I've ever done, um, 8 by 10 feet. So it, it took actually about as much time as I thought it would. Back in the fall of 09, when I began to put together the five compositional drawings, I went out and bought a new library of books and, and started to review historically, even though there's, to a certain degree, a harmony within the five branches, there's certainly a very great diversity, because that's why they're there. And, and it's, as you start to research each of them, you kind of get an understanding of why they are where they are and what they do, and, 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 and I'm just, really scratching the surface because um, uh, I could easily spend as much if not more time just doing reading and research than it takes to paint, you know. So I mean, I have to also remember that I'm supposed to be painting these things and not just burying myself in the library for the next five years. For me, I think what's most important um, is making people really proud and happy about what they did for their country, um, their families feeling that way, 
and the people that I have met and come in contact with have been just really fabulous. So, I mean, it's a whole new phase in my life and I'm dealing with individuals uh, and, and have become friends with people in different walks of life, life that I probably would have, I would have never thought I would be. You know, ask me five years ago if I'd be doing something like this, and I'd say, yeah, right. <laughs> It's really a, an incredibly rewarding, um, you know, feeling to come into the committal hall and, and see all of what has been accomplished, not only, you know, with the painting, but how the ambiance of the room has changed and the reaction of a lot of people. It, it's been a really great experience, people thanking, you know, me for taking the time out to do this to honor them. And I mean, I feel honored that I was, you know, asked to, to do it and that I'm you know, available to, to create a project like this, so it's, it's, uh, it's good. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope that you enjoyed the show and we look forward to seeing you next season right here on Common Ground. If you have a segment idea for common ground pertaining to North Central Minnesota, contact us at legacy at lptv.org or call us at 218-333-3022. To view this episode or any common ground segment, visit us at lptv.org backslash common ground. individual segments or copies of Common Ground, please call 218-333-3020. Common Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. If you enjoyed this segment of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org.